we think of Valentine's Day, we tend to think of a day full of love, a day full of flowers, candy, and overly romantic movies and love songs. But on February 14, 1988, Jenkins County Jane Doe was discovered wrapped in plastic and duct tape. She was found inside a large nylon duffel bag and had been thrown away like the empty candy wrappers and wilted flowers into a dumpster off of Old Perkins Road and Kaiser Road in Malin, Georgia. If you decide to look up the intersection where the dumpster would have been located, remember that the case is 31 years old and Kaiser Road no longer exists as it is now known as Bypass Road. It is estimated that the Jenkins County Jane Doe had been dead for approximately four to seven days prior to her being found. The cause of death was ruled as asphyxiation by means of homicide. The Jenkins County Jane Doe was somewhere between the ages of 16 and 22. She had long, dark brown hair, and her upper teeth were slightly crooked. Due to decomposition, her eye color is listed as undetermined on NamUs. However, the GBI lists her eye color as brown. She stood roughly 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 5 inches tall and weighed approximately 140 pounds. She was most likely of Asian or Asian Caucasian descent. Reading through the limited material provided on this case, it appears as though it is possible she may have been of Hispanic descent, though Namus only has Asian listed. Her body was found wrapped with bedding items. According to unidentified Wikia, there are three main items. A floral type design, pale green pillow, a maroon bedspread that had a similar floral pattern to the pillow, and a towel that had a butterfly design. They also reported that there was no clothing found on or near her body. Due to the nature of the scene, a rape kit was completed, but it came back negative although sexual assault was still not ruled out. It is known that the Jenkins County Jane Doe had a lower molar extracted recently before her death. According to NamUs, there has been one missing person exclusion. Yvonne Marie Mastas, who vanished from Rocky Ford, Colorado on November 1st, 1982. No other exclusions have been listed. As I mentioned previously, there is very limited information on the Jenkins County Jane Doe case. However, I do want to point out that I noticed a podcast called The Fall Line, which is a two-part series just under two hours long. I don't usually listen to podcasts or watch other videos relating to cases that I cover so as not to taint my own work, but in this instance, because it was so long, I chose to listen to see what information they uncovered. In their podcast, they had the opportunity to sit down with the GBI and discuss the case as well as look at the case files. I am choosing not to include the information because I did not obtain it through my own research. I am mentioning it though because it has a lot of really good information and goes further in depth into the case. I highly recommend you give it a listen as I have linked it in the description below. The only piece of information I'm going to give that I did obtain from the podcast is that the Jenkins County Jane Doe's body was cremated. I was unsure why exactly they chose to cremate her body, so I researched in depth what exactly happens to unclaimed and unidentified bodies. The answer was mixed. Overall, it appears most unidentified bodies are buried rather than cremated. Unclaimed bodies, on the other hand, it really depends on the situation and varies by the state and the county. Technically, while the Jenkins County Jane Doe is unidentified, she's also unclaimed. And I'm not sure there's a legal difference when associating the two, and that's why I'm bringing up the point of unclaimed bodies. Some places will hold a body for six months and then choose to bury it, while others will hold it for three years. I found this topic very interesting, and I think I may actually do a video explaining it more in depth but for the purposes of R. Jane Doe, I want to point out that an article in the AJC, Decatur, Georgia has a set of skeletal remains of an unidentified person dating back to 1969, still sitting in their morgue that has not been buried or cremated. Now, this is due to them needing a court order to bury their remains, 
but I find it odd that they've waited this long to even start that process. Plus, burying an unidentified person makes more sense to me than cremating one. I'm unsure if they collected any DNA from the Jenkins County Jane Doe, as DNA wasn't as popular in the 80s and technology has advanced immensely since then. Also, if there was ever a break in the case, we are no longer able to exhume her body if there was a need to. I'm speculating here, but through research, the average cost of a burial is $3,000 versus cremation, which is roughly $700. I don't know when they cremated her, so these numbers may be off for the time period if they did it back then, but it could possibly have come down to a monetary issue or a space issue if the morgue that was housing the remains was running out of room to hold her. There are currently no leads in the Jenkins County Jane Doe case, but there is another case that may or may not be related. There is no nickname for her, so we will call her the Butts County Jane Doe. Around 2 p.m. on December 28, 2017, a motorist was searching for a lost item a few miles away from exit 201 off of Interstate I-75 in Jackson, Georgia. They came across a suitcase which held the remains of the Butts County Jane Doe. She was African American and believed to be between the ages of 19 and 45. It is estimated she stood somewhere between 5 feet or 5 feet 8 inches tall. The Butts County Jane Doe had a prominent gap between her front teeth as well as a fracture on her right ankle that was considered to be, quote, well healed. It is believed that the suitcase with her remains had been there for, quote, quite some time, though that doesn't exactly narrow down a timeline. While not much information about the remains is known, it was reported by WMAZ that the remains were bones. Based on authority statements that the remains had been there for quite some time, and the report that the bones were left in the suitcase, we can infer that will have an impact on why there is such a huge difference in the height range listed for the Butts County Jane Doe. Her cause of death is listed as undetermined, and authorities have yet to say outright that it was a homicide. However, her remains being in a suitcase on the side of the interstate raised serious red flags. I do understand that without an official cause of death or an identification, why there is a hesitance to declare it as a homicide, although her death is definitely suspicious. Before I go into a potential match to our Jane Doe, I want to talk a little bit about the sketch provided from the GBI. The WSPA has an amazing article written by Diane Lee that details information about the process that the sketch artist named Kelly Lawson went through to draw the Butts County Jane Doe. I don't want to go too in-depth, so I will link the article in the description below, but I want to quote a specific part about why Lawson drew Jane Doe's hand up towards her mouth. Lawson said, quote, I put her hand up there to draw attention to the fact that her teeth were very unique, and I actually had those teeth to look at, which is rare because a lot of times the teeth will be missing. I wanted to point this out because it is rare that you see a hand covering part of the face on a facial reconstruction and I felt it was important to demonstrate the reasoning of why the artist's rendering was completed the way that it was. Web sleuthers were quick to point out that a missing woman from Florida named Rosalise Felix Hernandez had many of the same characteristics as the Butts County Jane Doe. Rosalise was 31 years old when she went missing from Jupiter, Florida in late 2016. She is from the Dominican Republic, and it's hard to miss the gap between her two front teeth. While the race doesn't quite match up, it must be remembered that when working with skeletal remains, it's not always a perfect science. Web sleuthers also pointed out a scar that is visible on Rosalie's right ankle in one of her Facebook pictures. In Rosalie's case, her husband Daniel York is a person of interest. She had a temporary restraining order against him after accusing him of assaulting her and of having an incestual relationship with her 13-year-old daughter. It turns out Daniel York has ties to Georgia, so it is possible that the Butts County Jane Doe could be her. Authorities have been notified and she has not yet been ruled out. I do want to point out that recently the Butts County Jane Doe's NamUs file has been removed from the website. 
The link brings up a page that says, quote, Sorry, we couldn't find the page or it is currently not accessible. I found that odd as I had referenced it many times throughout my research. I am unsure of what to make of this though as I have two theories. Either one, there was a potential break in the case, or two, they are updating her file. Although it has been down for over a week and it doesn't usually take that long, so I'm really hoping it's one, but that may be wishful thinking. Again, this is just me speculating, but if there is a break in the case, I will be sure to update everyone. After looking at these first two cases, it led me to one more case I wanted to mention. In yet another case is the Gwinnett County Jane Doe, who was later identified as 29-year-old Jessica Ashley Mancini. Her remains were discovered on July 26, 2016, by a member of the Department of Transportation along I-985 in Beaufort, Georgia. She had been stuffed into a suitcase and discarded on the side of the interstate about 80 yards into the woods. By the time her remains were found, nothing but bones were left. On the remains were a large black Miley Cyrus hoodie, Victoria's Secret pants, pink Nike shoes, and white mismatched socks. There were no obvious signs of traumatic injury to the bones, and therefore cause of death was listed as unknown. According to the Gwinnett Daily Post, there was a tag attached to the suitcase Mancini was found in that had faded blue ink. Through special technology, investigators were able to raise the writing on the tag, which had an address written on it. The address led them to Mancini's mother, located in Pennsylvania, and dental records confirmed that the remains did in fact belong to Jessica. It turns out, Mancini had been reported missing by her mother back in December of 2014. The circumstances aren't exactly clear, but investigators believe based on the state of her remains that she died sometime in 2016. According to WSB-TV2, Mancini's mother, Maria Caldwell, believes her daughter was murdered. She said, quote, there is no doubt in my mind that somebody murdered her. Her life was way too short, and I know someone did this to her. There is no doubt in my mind. According to the same article, Sergeant Jake Smith believes there was some foul play involved based on the autopsy, but he is unsure if it was on purpose. So how did three women in Georgia end up in a duffel bag or suitcase, just discarded like trash? Are these cases connected? When I first started my research, I thought it could be possible, but now I lean more towards most likely not. But what's most important here is that we get justice for these women. We need to give the names back to our Jane Doe's and find out what happened to them as well as Jessica Ashley Mancini. Someone out there knows something. The Jenkins County Jane Doe was somewhere between the ages of 16 and 22. She had long, dark brown hair and her upper teeth were slightly crooked. She stood roughly five foot four to five feet five inches tall and weighed approximately 140 pounds. She possibly had brown eyes and was most likely of Asian or Asian Caucasian descent and possibly even Hispanic descent. Anyone with information on the Jenkins County Jane Doe should call GBI Agent Peak at 912-871-1121. The Butts County Jane Doe is believed to be African American and is somewhere between the ages of 19 and 45. It is estimated she stood somewhere between 5 feet or 5 feet 8 inches tall. She has a prominent gap between her two front teeth. Anyone with information on the Butts County Jane Doe should call the GBI at 478-445-4173 or the Butts County Sheriff's Office at 770-775-8232. Jessica Ashley Mancini was found in a suitcase on the side of I-985 in Buford, Georgia. She was last seen in Gwinnett County. Anyone with information on Jessica Ashley Mancini's case should call the Gwinnett County Police Department at 770-513-5300. If you would like to remain anonymous in her case, you can contact Crime Stoppers at 
577-8477.